And uh, Rob, today is Michael Jordan's 60th birthday. And everyone knows that you and I think he's the GOAT. So I think we can make our quick cases. We don't have to go through everything because people have heard us talk about it before. But I want to throw it out, maybe an extended calls period. And I've said this, Rob, for a long time, and we'll see if it, if it becomes the case. But a lot of older, like, players, older, like before Jordan, they don't necessarily call him the GOAT. Guys of his generation, guys after him, seem to almost unanimously view him as the GOAT. But the guys before him don't. And, um, or certainly not definitively, you know, a lot of them, Rob will just kind of say, oh, there is none. And, you know, there are all these great players and blah, blah, blah. But I, I've thought for a while, Rob, that when the millennials, when the millennials are controlling the narrative, when they're the ones doing shows like you and I have, and they're the predominant voice on television or radio on podcast, that's when. LeBron may become viewed as the GOAT, uh, at least because they'll be dominating the narrative and they'll push that, just like our generation has said it's Jordan, even though their generation before it may not necessarily think that. Um, I don't know if that'll be the case. I think the last dance, and you and I have talked about it, that really put a dent in LeBron's case, even with millennials. We saw that with the polling after that. But... I think LeBron got a little surge by becoming the all-time leading scorer. Um, obviously, uh, it was the you, time you couldn't tell at the uh, Super Bowl, though, the way they booed yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, that's that, 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 that's fine. I mean, but I, I think that you know he's never going to be as popular as Michael Jordan. Uh, he's certainly more polarizing, but I, I do think that put you know his historical achievements and his longevity out on front street. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it'll, you know, maybe See, that won't is, be the case. This is why, but yeah, this, that's why this. I want to hear from the callers. I, I'll say this: this is the one thing I do not agree with you, and I understand what you're saying about who will be controlling the narrative. But the problem I have with that is if he plays four years, four more years, and plays 23 or 24 years and has four championships, that's a hard case to make. It ju- I agree. It ju- I, it just I think is. I said I, that yeah, before you. you. Know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I really do, Chris. Like, you got to sit there and then try to convince somebody they played 24 years and won four championships, and Steph Curry played during the same era and has more. Uh, or, well, or has at more. this point, the right. equal. Right, like, right. And could have more. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, right. like, that's a hard case to make, even if you're doing that narrative. But I, right. I, I hear what you're saying. It will be different people talking, but that's what hurts LeBron. I really do the longer he plays, actually. Well, that's a good point. And, Rob, Michael Jordan won a championship. He won six in 15 years. He won a championship two out of every three years. Think about that. So every – I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He won a championship every two and a half years. Right, right. So every three seasons, he was raising up the the Larry O'Brien trophy. You know, I mean, he did it six straight, essentially. But still – and, Rob, let's keep it real. Two of those seasons, I mean, if people want to get technical, oh, well, LeBron was hurt some of the years in L.A., okay. But I would say two of two of Jordan's seasons, Rob, the second year he came back with, like, 18 games left or 17 left. You can't even and count third, that as a season. Right. I'm dead serious. You can't. And, the, 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 and then he came back from baseball. Right. And played, like, 18 games, and they got be- – Those like, are two and then seasons, Those Chris. are two seasons. So right. he – he had 11 seasons with the Bulls. Like 11 full seasons right. with the Bulls and won six. That's almost that's more than half. More right? than half. That that and, and and like you said LeBron is four in 19 years at this point. And if he plays he's winning, three or if four, if they don't right. win it this year, he's winning it one out every 5 years. Jordan won twice as many, you know, according to the math. You know what I'm saying? in terms of per year, right? He's winning them every two and a half years. LeBron's winning them every five years if he doesn't win it this year. And it could get worse, Rob, like you said, if 23, 24 years. So I'm with you. Um, and I just think, and we'll make our quick cases, and Rob just made a good one. And then we want to hear from you guys. 
And look, if you think it's Jordan, fine, you can call in. But we really want to no, hear no, what the guy, we want to hear you make a case for LeBron. We don't want to hear from the Kareem Jordan people. Or whoever. Yeah, we don't want right, to hear from the Jordan people. We're telling you, Jordan. Right. We, we want to hear from you guys that think it's LeBron or somebody else. And let's and let's give them some time, Chris. We can, yeah, we can we break early give and give you time, but no Jordan calls. We already know. We don't need to hear the same argument Chris and I have put up for him. So it's really the other people. That's right. what we want to hear. We want to hear from you guys. I'll say this, Rob, I, and this has been one of my, my arguments. LeBron, as great as he's been, and both you and I, and this is the, the, like, look, we say people got to mature. Just because we think LeBron is not the GOAT. Doesn't mean he's a bum. Doesn't mean we don't like him. Doesn't mean we're haters. Doesn't mean we don't think he can play. I, I've had a good relationship with LeBron. I've written tons of stories about him, you know, and, and, and you know, had one-on-ones with him and all that. Um, but I'm just objectively looking at it, Rob. He did not dominate the NBA, not close, to the way Jordan did. He just didn't. I mean, individually, Jordan led the league in 13 times in a, in a category, right? 10 times in scoring, three times in steals. Le, LeBron's led in two categories, twice, like once in scoring and once in assists. Uh, we talked about the winning. Remember when LeBron had the great run in the East and he got to the finals eight straight years? He locked the, the East down. The East belonged to him. Problem is, Michael Jordan did that with the whole league, right? Like it wasn't just the East. And if and if you want to go league. and if you want to go take a look, and you can say whatever for whatever reason, say, "Well, Michael, well, the league uh, expansion. They had all these weak teams. There were no good teams." Ask the ten Hall of Famers, Chris, that Michael Jordan prevented from winning a championship. Right. Forget about those other bad teams that you want right. to bring up or expansion teams. Ask Patrick no, Ewing no. and Reggie Miller and all those guys and uh, Carl, Malone Carl Malone and John Charles Stockton, Barkley. Charles Bar- Ask them. Yep. And it might have been Olajuwon and Drexler had, had, he, had Jordan he been not around. retired. And he he dominated the best era of big men we've ever seen, Rob. Shaq. And that didn't happen Ewing, back then. The big Elijah men always, Juan, Chris, had. Yep. They own the league. They own the league. And he came in and, and took it away from them. And um, yeah, it, it's it, it. And I'll say this quickly, and then we'll open it up for the callers, because uh, a lot of people are big into saying now that Jordan dominated a watered down league. Right. That's, uh, the, that's... the players are better today. I'll give you that the players are more athletic today. I'll give you that they can dribble better. You know, by like most positions can handle the ball better. But a lot of that's because they let you carry. I mean, they really let you carry. You know, I, I was Rob. My mom is seventy eight years old, and she's watching the going by. And we watch the game, and she can't stop talking about. Look at how they carrying the ball. And that unbelievable, Look at how they Chris. Carry. That's Look unbelievable. Seventy nine, eight year old lady with right. dementia, and she's right. And so that enables you to handle the ball a lot better, Rob. They could hand check. They could hand check. So eat all this shake and bake you doing and creating space. That wouldn't be happening if you could hand check. You used to be able to put a hand like this, Chris, on yep. your back. And then they changed it to the bent the elbow. elbow. Right. Yep. So, you know, there I don't I think the teams then were just as good. They played better team basketball. Guys are more athletic. They shoot better. They handle better. But they played team basketball better back then. And Rob, you know this. There were some athletes back then, too. Don't act like dudes couldn't jump. Dudes weren't quick. Dudes weren't strong. There were athletes then, too, who were tremendous, and they pl- knew how to play as a team better than the guys today. Five-man basketball. All right, we're throwing it out to you. LeBron fans, Kareem fans, whoever else, Bill Russell, you, whoever you think is the GOAT, we want to hear your argument. We're going to give you time to say it. So let's kick it off with uh, Kyle in California. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Kyle? Hey, Rob, Chris, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Man, How you guys thank doing? you, brother. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for your support, Kyle. We appreciate yes. you. All right. So my thoughts on this is, uh, you know, I really despise LeBron James. I really do. But I have to acknowledge that he's probably the greatest of all time because he's the most complete player of all time in terms of defense, being able to, you know, get assists, rack up points, and – 
if it comes down to the end of the game, I want MJ taking the shot, but I have to respect LeBron's body of work. And so that's kind of the, the argument I would make for him. All right, but Not you enough, lose us, man. right? You lose Not us enough. when you say you you don't want you want MJ at the end of the game to take that final shot. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate Jordan was it. a better defender. Yes, Chris, Play, defensive player of the year, nine time All Defensive Team. LeBron six time. I mean, best player in the league, arguably on both sides of the floor. There at you least go. at one year, he was definitely that MVP and DPO. Why? Lou in uh, Sa- Salem, Oregon. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio instead of Salem, Massachusetts. What's up, uh, Lou? Hey, guys. So, you know, I'm too young to have seen Bill Russell play, but you look at his body of work in highlights and in the, in the record books, and I just don't think that there's anybody else. He played against Wilt Chamberlain and won, what, eight out of nine championships or nine out of ten championships? He was the complete player on defense and offense, except for a three-point shot that didn't exist then. The question is, you know, would he, how would he do now? I think he'd dominate now. For anybody of his, he had a brain, he was smart, and he was athletic, and he was gifted, and he was an all-around player. I don't think anybody can come close to Wilt Chamberlain. Not even Jordan. Not even Jordan. All right, Lou, here's your issue, well, guy, Chris. Bill Let has the 11. 11 rings in 13 years, Rob. It's unbelievable. Um, However, here's my argument against Russell versus Jordan. Bill certainly dominated winning, but he didn't dominate individually as much as What do you average, 14 points? 15 points a game for his career route on 44% shoot. That's not, that's not all-time great. No. And, and the other thing with the championships, he, Chris, I'm not knocking them. They won it, but there were eight or ten teams in the NBA, right. and there was no free agency. So, right. Chris, if you had a stacked team, go back in the 50s. The Yankees won all the World Series. The Celtics won all the uh, championships. The Montreal Canadiens won all the Stanley Cups. And the Packers won all. <laughs> Chris, during that you era, couldn't move. you couldn't move. They had a great right. team. That's why That's why the trophy's named after Lombardi, because of the right. Packers. I'm, I'm telling you, that was the era that yeah. that happened in. All yeah, right? Absolutely. Chris in Florida, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Chris? How are you guys doing today? First time caller. How Thank you. Guys you. Doing? We're doing great. We Thanks, great. Chris. All right. So my argument, I'm born and raised in Cleveland, so I'm a big LeBron fan. I think LeBron is better. I think the first art thing you have to say is how you would define who's the greatest of all time or the characteristics and then get those out of the way. I think the reason why LeBron's is better is just, as you guys mentioned before, he dominated the East and he dominated so well. And just look at the teams that he took to the finals all those years, like he had Mo Williams and Delonte West some of those times, and I mean, against the greatest shooter ever, against Steph Curry, he took up against his entire bench because Kyrie and Kevin Love couldn't play, and he did that his first year back in Cleveland. And to argue against Jordan, you guys were looking at the 11 seasons with the Bulls, which I'm completely impressed with. They won 6 out of 11. That's incredible. But I think it's not very fair that you're looking at just the seasons he was with the Bulls and not all the time that he played in the NBA. Well, we said, look, six out of 15, that's still one every two and a half years, a championship. Yeah. I'll give you, I do agree. I think LeBron, because he, you know, ball dominant, but was so great and could control the tempo, I think there's no other player that could just do more with less. Now, he never was able to get, like a, a a a mediocre cast to a championship, but he could get them deep in the playoffs, have them win sixty some odd games. He, I, I give him that. I, I, you know, but you got to give him get him over the top at some point. And and when he had the great teams, he didn't win it all the time. You know, Miami two or four. Rob, we talked right. about it all that the time. That was the one so, that he could have separated, Chris, he because really, so few ha- teams. Yep. Have won three in a row, right? Uh, Jordan did it twice, and Jordan then, did it twice. Shaq and Kobe. That's it. LeBron yep. had that chance, and they they wind up that that the great team in Miami won two out of four, losing to a bad Dallas team that yeah. shouldn't have beat them. And that was LeBron, LeBron, and he would admit that he he's the guy that wasn't himself. Right. Let's go to Jim in California. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. So yeah, I think that. Anybody that argues LeBron is asinine because he hasn't dominated his era. Kobe Bryant absolutely dominated his era. 
the 90s, the 90s was Jordan's, but the early 2000s was Kobe's. Nobody in the NBA wanted to face Kobe Bryant, and he dominated. So, so you got goat. Kobe as the GOAT? Kobe is the GOAT, even though he don't have the hardware that Jordan has. He didn't win the six championships. But if Kobe Bryant played in any era, in any time, he can he can beat you so many different ways. Well, I, would, I think all of these guys would be great in any era. I mean, LeBron, Jordan, you know, all of them. But here's here's the problem with the Kobe argument, Robin. I know you know this. You already know. I'm, I'm with you already I, without you saying it. First three championships, he was the second best player on the team. And that doesn't mean he was a bum or he didn't right. play. He, he's, Shaq he's, was the most dominating yep. player in the NBA, Chris. He was. Right. There's no no doubt about you, it. And if you go back and, and say he wasn't, you're lying. Right. And then Kobe, you know, he look, Kobe's great. But he wasn't the most efficient shooter. Never shot better than 46% from the floor. Rob, they used to say Dominique Wilkins was a gunner. In the 80s when he shot like 48%, 47%. And Kobe never even hit those numbers with Shaq drawing double and triple teams. No so doubt. So that would be my argument against Kobe. We got a couple more. David in Nashville. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, David? Hey, thank you. A long time, first time. Hey, uh, hey oh, thanks. Great to have you. Yes, thank you. Listen, uh, did Michael Jordan ever score 100 points in a single game? <laughs> No, he didn't. He didn't need but to. But Wilton Norman Chamberlain did. Did Michael <laughs> Jordan ever grab 55 rebounds in a single game? He didn't come close, but Will Chamberlain did. Why did, did Michael Will Jordan win more? ever lead the league in assists? But Will Chamberlain did. Wilton Norman Chamberlain is the single most dominant force to ever play basketball. It's not even close. And I know the argument. Bill Russell won 11, uh, nine, 11, 11 championships. Yeah. Russell. Uh, uh, Chamberlain won two, but Russell had like six other all-stars on his team. And Chamberlain would have won more if he had coaches that would have put him on the floor in the last two minutes. Wilton well, Norman Will, Chamberlain is simply uh, stated the most dominant force in the history of basketball. I love Will, you guys. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And yeah, that's, I like that call. That's an impassioned call. And he made a good argument, Rob. He made a good argument. But, Rob, Will played three seasons – with Elgin Baylor and Jerry West, and they didn't win it. He ended up winning it when when Elgin retired and Gail Goodrich came in, and that year he averaged 14 points a game. So, Will, like Russell dominated in terms of winning, but not necessarily individually in terms of stats. Will dominated individually in terms of stats, but not winning. He got two rings, and he had some good teams. I get it that Russell had a stacked team, but let's face it, a lot of those dudes, Robs, are Hall of Famers because Russell, they won so much, you know? So they got in. I was going to say one thing. I know we're up against it. You cannot say that Wilt Chamberlain didn't win and use that against him when five minutes ago you said the only reason Bill Russell won because he had all the best players. So it can't be both. I didn't say that. You got— Oh, Rob there was seemed that. to be a consensus. No, all I'm saying that all the, was the reason why Bill Russell gets knocked is because he had all the good players. No, but but back then, no, and I, the, no. my only point is that it was just that once you had a good team, Chris, it didn't break up over free agency. Is what I'm saying. But couldn't you, couldn't that you era, argue that free agency is why the NBA was watered down in the '90s, as Larry Bird, Charles no, Barkley both said? No, but the problem is. That Charles look Barkley, at, friend of the show, by as, the way. As look at those 10 uh, Hall of Famers that didn't get in. They went to the finals. They didn't win. And, and my is, biggest issue with Russell, Rob, is 15 points on 44% shooting. But I the, mean, as, as a guy that's one of the biggest players in the league at that point. He was 6'8". most of his shots. Yeah, 6'9", at, <laughs> at, at least. Okay. And he was shooting most of his shots around the rim. And you only shot 44%? I'm just saying, like, you know, that's my main thing. But uh, he was a winner. I think he's the greatest winner in American sports history, even better than Tom Brady in that regard. So I give him that, and he is an all-time great. And he beat Wilt, no doubt. He, he owned Wilt when it counted as far as winning.